The Justice Department's Ferguson report is out, and the president's opinion is in. I don't think that is typical of what happens across the country, but uh, it's not an isolated insult, incident. I think that there are circumstances in which uh, trust between communities and law enforcement have broken down, and, and uh, individuals or entire departments uh, may not have uh, the training or the accountability uh, to make sure that uh, you know, they're protecting and serving uh, all people and not just some. Well, that's all Minister Jonathan Gentry needed to hear uh, to say that he has essentially heard enough. Um, Reverend, good to have you back on. What did you make of that? What the president was saying is that Ferguson is not an isolated case. Uh, this is a, a, a systemic and endemic problem in this country. I mean, what's happening, uh, Neil, thank you for having me again as far as, you know, what Elder, uh, Eric Holder said on Wednesday and even with Obama. This, this message, what needs to be told and as far as what's going on with the Department of Justice and the prison system, the, uh, with, with the black males being in there, the message across now needs to be told, stay out of it stay away. That's the message that these leaders should be bringing to the minorities, to the African-American communities or who, whoever that has a problem with the Department of Justice or the criminal justice system. Stay out of it. You understand? If you don't like it, stay away from it. There are more black males in the prison system than it's children at Disneyland. Why is that? You understand? Don't complain about it, but yet you guys are eager to go by the crimes that you all are committing. That is the message that needs to be taught right now and brought to the nation from all across the communities. You understand there are some issues with the, the police departments. I understand there is. However, yet you cannot commit crimes and do what you do, resist arrest, and expect that you're not going to get disciplined for it. What do you think Plain young African Americans, though, who hear the president, hear this more than they'll hear you, even though we have a lot of viewers on this show, and they're going to assume, well, you know, he's right. The president's right. I, I am a victim. Well, see, that, that's, that's the message Eric Holder and the president wants to bring, a poverty spirit mindset. And I'm not talking about poverty with money. Poverty isn't always about money. It's the spirit. It's the victimized oppression. You ain't going to be anything. You're not going to succumb to nothing. You're just going to go through life and just be a statistic. They're bringing that kind of message to the hearts and ear ears to those who can't think for themselves. You understand? God is trying to have this nation evolve for change. And it has to be brought by the messages that these leaders have to bring, but they're not doing that. They want you to be oppressed. You understand? I'm trying to pick you up and take you to higher ground through the spirit that God gave me. You understand? I'm really trying to help the African-American community, primarily the black males. But they keep wanting to go back feeling that they're victimized. I don't feel that way. So well, Jonathan, you? We, we, you mentioned last time you were I wish we had more time the last time. You, you talked about the fact that we've lost God, period. Young, old, black, white, everyone in between. And that our compass is sort of shattered. It has, Neil, honestly, warning comes before destruction. It does. God is trying to bring this country back together through the knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ. If that does not happen, woe unto this nation. Plain and simple. That is all I'm trying to bring to these people, to the hearts and ears of homes. Tell these people the truth. Eric Holder, Sharpton, Obama, tell these people, these families that are broken, the truth. They need the truth. These families are destroying themselves based upon the messages that you're bringing to them. You understand me? God changes, and God is a God of new beginnings. You need to let them know that God can change anyone's life around. The prison system isn't for anyone. But yet, don't go there by the stupidity that you keep bringing to these police officers and to your community. Don't, don't stand in front of a police department telling them to clean up your neighborhood when it's the crack and whorehouse on your block that's destroying your minds and poisoning your children's future. Why don't, don't you do get a chance to get an audience with these task forces that are set up by the administration and others to look into this sort of thing? Because all you generally hear is the other side. Uh, and I, I have nothing against hearing for the Al Sharptons and all these others. Fine. But the fair and balanced part of me says, well, I want, I want to hear from guys like you, too. 
Why not? Why doesn't that happen? I think I have reached out to some of these leaders. They have. They have ignored me. I don't Why? know what it Why is. I don't know why you it? all are so petrified. I, I don't know. I, I, you, have, you have to ask them. I think these gentlemen are petrified of the truth because I'm, 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 I'm bringing, I'm raining on their, their crooked parade. They know what they're doing. They know it. I'm only here to tell these people the truth. I say that now with almost tears in my eyes. These families are being destroyed. Tell these people the truth. Even if you shake, tell them the truth. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have to stand and you're going to have to be accountable by the messages you brought to them. That's what I'm saying to these leaders. God has raised me up at a time as this to tell them, to tell them, you better tell these people the truth and tell them with all of your ability. And that's what's happening because these people are giving up, Neil. Countries and families are giving up. They're giving up. You go to churches today, you, you see a family that's broken. And some preachers and pastors today, even they're lying to them. Well, have Why? you ever reached out to people like Al Sharpton, for example? I would love to, Neil. If you could set that up in Fox, Megyn Kelly, O'Reilly, whoever. Please, uh, I, set I, it up. I, I, I would love to talk I, I to this man. I wouldn't hold your breath for that one, Reverend. I mean, although God works in mysterious <laughs> ways. Now, where do you think this is going? Now, as you said at the outset, Reverend, there are, there are certainly cases and incidents of, of clear bias in some police departments. And you have no doubt. I have no doubt. What you're trying to say is don't hang on that as a, as a national standard or the, that all cops act this way, all towns act this way, all governments act this way, right? They don't. They don't, and I understand where they're coming from, but yet you have to understand not every department is like that. I know tons of police officers. I'm sure you do. Not every police officer is racist. Not every department is trying to get you. You understand? They're not. But it's, the, it's also to your accountability and the responsibilities of what you're doing out here in these streets. You understand what I'm saying? You, you, you can't commit crimes and think you won't and will not be disciplined for it. Well said. Well it, it, said. It, it just, it, 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 you, you just can't. I'm not, you, you don't see me saying that. I mean, it's always the individuals that want to commit crimes or do wrong and then say the police department is doing us wrong. You can't do that. Jonathan, well put. I don't think it would do anyone any harm just to hear you out, hear that other point of view. We try to do it here. I don't think he's a bad guy to listen to, folks. All right, Jonathan Dutry, thank you very, very much. God bless you, Neil. Thank you. You, you as well, my friend.